Welcome to Living Culture, everybody. I'm your host, Nate Raffin. Uh, we are joined once again today uh, by Steve Morton. Welcome, Steve. Thanks for being on the show. Nate, pleasure to be on the show again. Appreciate what that. What are we up to today? Well, we are at the Saturday Salem Public Market. It is Oregon's oldest farmer's market. And we're going to be talking with Dennis Croker of DK Farms out of Willamina. And I think we're going to be looking for some uh, local lamb to cook up for lunch. Awesome. That would be wonderful. Let's do it. Let's go. All right. Good. Hey Dennis, how you doing? Good. How are you, Martin? Yeah. Good to see you again. Good to see you. We're a uh, very small producer. We're uh, we're out in Little Mina, and we do lamb, beef, pork, and veal. It's all hormone-free, no substitutes, antibiotics, or growth enhancers. Um, this is primarily our method of sales, except for off the farm. So we are tiny, and we get like to think that we're growing specifically for every customer that comes in here. It's not yes. like and we have the obligation to produce a good product because one way or the other we're going to see them next week or maybe hopefully we'll see them next week so so we can't just put something out there and uh, and and then and then lose track of it so we like to keep tabs on um, how, how, how it's going and people come back and they seem to like our product so. we'd like to find some uh, some lamb possibly to cook up for lunch is there is there anything that you recommend that you have on hand right now how about a nice rack of lamb Ooh, I would love that. Oh, it's French too. Check that out. Partially French, right up to here. That's gorgeous. How old is this lamb when it's uh, slaughtered? Uh, this is probably about nine months. Nine months. Mm -hmm. So grass-fed. The... Grass-fed. I have a special feed uh, regimen that I put them on. Awesome. Lamb, you can change the flavor of in two weeks by what it eats. Interesting. Uh, so. Spring lambs have always been said to be the best lambs because we see what they're finishing on out there exactly. right now. It's spring grass. Nice and green and lush yeah. and growing. Awesome. Yeah. Lambs that are finished at the end of the season, yeah. end of the summer, the grass yeah. is gone, picked over the browsers and is nice. Yeah. Uh, it's going to reflect that flavor. What would the flavor? What is the difference in that flavor? I mean, I, I've had grass-fed animals before that are really have that really wonderful, clean flavor. Later in the season, how does that flavor change when they're doing stubble and things? That... To me, it's 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 a little bit. Uh, it tends to be a little more musky to me. More intense. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So what we've done is even my spring lambs. Every time I process, they're still on pasture, still doing their thing. Right. But they get an added supplement, something that we've come up with over wow. a proprietary. Uh, uh, that we put them on for uh, two weeks. It's all vegetarian. It's all the stuff you can get at the feed store, done in the right uh, uh, right quantity, and it's not very much. Yeah. Uh, and that way, my spring lambs fall. In, Any time I put a pro, uh, process a lamb, it's going to be a consistent product. So whenever. Well, Dennis, thank you. We're looking thank forward to cooking this lamb up this morning. Right, very good. Yeah, awesome. I'm, I'm very excited yeah. about this. Yeah. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Um. You know, we might want to get a little red wine for this. Yeah, I'm thinking if we're doing rack of lamb, Nate, we might need some Oregon Pinot Noir to go with that. Okay. Yeah, let's awesome. do that. Should we hit Debbie at Sandy M Wine? Yeah, sure. Awesome. We're on our way. Coming up next okay. on Living Culture. I that one. Yeah, I right. think you're okay. getting more air in the glass. It's it's shooting up the scent and aromas up the side of the glass. You also can visually inspect the wine better because it's thinner in the glass. Because it's if you would like more information on Living Culture, visit our website, www.livingcultureonline.com. Just up the street from the Salem Public Market is Santiam Wine Company. We're here to speak with Debbie about finding a nice local red wine to enjoy with our lamb. So enjoyable. A yeah. wine pro from Provence. This oh, is um, with the, the herbs Provence. On yes, the yes, yes. Syrah, Moved, Grenache. Gosh, that would be wonderful. All three of them. Do you have any bigger glasses? No, just just, just two. Of them. <laughs> <laughs> We could do the Riedel. You know, I do sell Riedel. We do have it. Here you go. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. We're wine drinkers with a cooking habit. So this is in the cheap and cheerful as well. Oh, that's beautiful. Mmm, yum. Oh, that's fabulous. And this is from... Um, Provence. Provence. I think that'd be wonderful with a lamb. I actually keep catching a little lavender in that too. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Isn't that a nice wine? It's beautiful. Nine fifty a bottle. Can you believe it? Good value. Cheap and yeah. cheerful. Very cheerful. 
So there's no, Nadia. Go ahead this and put it class, class, up to here. And this here. is Steve's class. Okay. <laughs> this is Steve's class. This is Nate's class. Debbie gives us a quick demonstration in how okay. selecting glassware can affect the aroma and taste of a particular style of wine. <laughs> you want to really aerate it? Really aerate it. bubbles in it. <laughs> okay, now pour that into that glass. Okay. Go ahead, Steve. Do the same thing, the swirl and the sniff and the taste. Well, I can tell you the big glass is funner. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's smart. Do you get yeah. more of a nose from that's that? Right. It opens it's a little deeper. It really does. And I can fit a lot more wine in this glass. That's important. That's very true. They've already done that. Okay, then I did that one. Yeah, I think you're getting more air in the glass. It's it's shooting up the scent and aromas up the side of the glass. There is a big difference. She also recommends a nice local Pinot Noir to enjoy with our lunch. What uh, what makes the Willamette Valley such a good uh, wine producing area? Oh, the weather. Okay. The soil. Do you want to taste some wine? Are the main? Those are those are. It's just conducive to. Oh yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The, the aroma. It's worth the price of admission. Not so cheap, but plenty cheerful. Mm -hmm. I think that'll go really nice. Oh, that's yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's beautiful. Well, thanks again. I appreciate it. It was a pleasure. Yeah. It's a pleasure meeting you. Now that we've decided on the wine, we're ready to head back to Steve's kitchen and prepare the lamb. You're watching Living Culture on Capital Community Television. Should we go cook this lamb up, Nate? Mm -hmm. Baby. Just okay. Part of the And what I'm doing is I've got blanched potato russets or russet potato slices, onions and red pepper, salt and pepper, uh, taking it, layering it in here into this timbal mold. A little salt and pepper, same here. Kind of firsting it down in there. We're gonna pop this in the oven, Nate, and then we're gonna build our rack of lamb on top of this timbal when we're done. To give it some attractive height. Plus we're gonna get that lovely potato flavor and texture. Forcing it down, forcing it down. We'll swing this over here by Dan the man. Give that a little heat. Uh, we got separation. In the oven it goes. Well, what we have here, Nate, is that rack of lamb that Dennis gave us from DK Farms, a spring grass-fed lamb. It's a full rack with the fat cap on. We're gonna trim this cap off and what's called French this lamb rack. We're gonna take the ends of these rib bones down about two inches and it's kind of a cool little trick to do that um, uh, you can ask your butcher if you're looking for a rack of lamb that's French to ask him if he can French that and tell him how far down the bones you want that Frenched but I'm lifting there's a natural seam right here along the fat cap I'm lifting that up got my sharp boning knife going to facilitate this uh, incision here and what we're going to do is we're going to marinate this lamb in, in herbs Provençal a little red wine and garlic and mustard. So now I'm diving down in, right along the bones. I take off that cap. We're gonna take this down, trim it. I'm gonna take each one of these rib bones with my knife, make a short incision right down on the bone. I get, use my thumb to measure the bone and I want to make sure that incision down that silver skin is right on the bone in the center. What that does is allows you to take that rack over and carefully with your boning knife using the back of the knife you can push that membrane back from the rack exposing those bones. So we're gonna take it down to about where we start to meet the fat line right here. Then we'll take this thing, 
force it out. Diamond pattern to help get the heat into that fat to release that fat for basting. You could return, you could take that cut all the way up to the top through this if you wanted. I prefer not to, but there's a little bit of silver skin right on the face of that lamb. What I'm doing is I'm turning the blade up. I'm taking the blade into the silver skin, but then I'm using the silver skin to guide me out of there so that I don't take any of the lamb meat itself. And I'm just taking off the part that I know is a little bit chewy. And I'm now going to in a marinade that I'm going to leave it in for six to eight hours. It's a flash marinade made with Pinot Noir, wine, garlic, Pro herbs Provencal, primarily sage and rosemary, um, and uh, a little bit of soy sauce. Beautiful. Voila! <laughs> Sometimes what'll happen on this, before we throw this rack of lamb onto the broiler, we're just gonna wrap the bones up because they tend to, are like little sticks, they'll burn. At least uh, initially, the rack's gonna be on the broiler for a bit. So all I'm doing is just ensuring that the bones don't get burned up. I'm gonna take that lamb, lay over on the broiler, you guys recognize this from our first show. We did the Chateau Brion. This is our mock Jew, which is just a, a, a mixture of uh, soy, a little bit of corn syrup, and some wine. And what it does is provides kind of a foundation for the sauce we're going to make in a little bit. Just a, I say sauce loosely because it really is just more of a glaze we're going to use, incorporating that Pinot Noir, that lovely 2005 Brooks Pinot Noir that we picked up from uh, Debbie at San Diego Wine Company. And then uh, we'll also have, we have a little bit of spring asparagus here that we'll saute up really fast when we get to the point where we're gonna dish this thing up. Now you, what you could do with this lamb if you wanted, you could take this lamb and put it in uh, the oven and finish it there. But you won't build the same kind of fond or the same crust in the oven. It would, it would sweat it and bake it. This temperature on that range is probably pushing 500 degrees right there. Oven is 500, but it's a different kind of heat. And he feels kind of gushy there to the touch, like you know that's rare inside. So we probably got another 10 minutes on that lamb. Here's our little tin ball. We're just gonna take the baby, turn it over. Gonna build this plate up. We brought a couple items from the herb garden. Spring lamb, spring asparagus. These two herbs are really doing well in your garden right now. This is fresh sage and rosemary. Now we're gonna take that lamb out of the pan. Hey Nate, you wanna uncork our pinot for us and we'll, we'll let that rest for a moment. We're gonna deglaze a little bit of Pinot Noir. Gonna stabilize the wine and reinforce it with our mock jus we had. We'll do a little reduction there. And for fun, a little rosemary in there, a little sage, a little lemon juice. We're gonna take asparagus. Let's just take, saw it down a little bit. We're gonna take that guy, cut these chops. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. I've had people tell me when we do this rack that this is the finest lamb they've ever had. It's real simple. There, you can hear those bones crunching. I'm just gonna take them around our tin ball here. Interconnect those bones. Kinda like we're building a little teepee or lean-to. Take a little fresh black pepper. Just like the smell and aroma coming off that plate from that pepper. We've got, uh, we used our lemon olive oil earlier on that potato, but we're just gonna put a little drizzle over the top. We have a little uh, balsamic vinegar reduction. Yeah. 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 Let's go eat.
The Rack of Lamb was fantastic. Thanks for joining us, everybody. I'm Nate Raffin, and this is Living Culture. <laughs>